Cam here and welcome to Amateur Hour. I got more Meshtastic stuff in the works. So this was originally going to be my base station unit and uh, I've decided against that since it's ESP32 based uh, and there is a much more power efficient solution. Uh, this is the uh, Rack 19007 uh, board with a Rack 4630 lower module installed and this is supposed to be very power efficient and uh, it's kind of what I'm looking for because I'm going to have a solar panel uh, attached to this and I just want this to kind of be its own self-sufficient thing. When it comes to power uh, I'm going to be using a single 18650 battery because that is what I have on hand. A lot of people will say that they use two of them and uh, actually I've seen some people say even three or four and that will let you run for a while um, but I have a bunch of these single cell holders so I'm gonna go ahead and I printed off the wonderful model from Tony G uh, I'll have a link to uh, all this stuff in the description including his model there's a bunch of different options for it you can do double 18650s you can do flat uh, battery packs you can do a screen cutout if you want to have a screen on yours um, it's super customizable it's really cool uh, but this is just um, it's pretty bare bones this isn't going to be moving around so I didn't opt for a GPS or anything so uh, I think we should just go ahead and get started oh and also if you've noticed this is a very cheap 18650 holder there's no kind of connector or anything on here and the rack 19007 board has a JST plug on there um, I'm not going to buy a whole pack of JST plugs just to use it for this one project so I'm going to be either soldering to the back or I'm going to desolder this connector and solder this in or at least attempt to and uh, I'm going to do it that way so uh, I'm sure it'll look ugly but it'll be all covered up by this case so it doesn't matter and if you're wondering why did I print every single piece in pink uh, well the simple answer is I had it loaded in the printer already and I don't care what this looks like this is going inside another box uh, that's going to be waterproof so this is just kind of to keep the whole uh, rack wireless unit in battery in one kind of convenient package for me to move around until I get it inside that box okay so to get started I am going to uh, disconnect my two antennas and be careful with these are they are very fragile um, you might connect them and disconnect them a lot and they don't break but let me tell you once in a while they will break and they are a pain in the butt so um, I think probably I'm gonna just kind of try and do a pseudo test fit here there's a button that I've got to put in right here. It's very small. Uh, it's going to go into this hole here so I can actuate that button. And then the battery connector I need is here. So that's okay to solder to that. There's nothing, it's not uh, interfering with anything. Um, does this go here or does this go here? Okay, so looks like it sits together like this. Oh, a little tight. That's okay. So, something like that. That's what it should look like when it's done. And beautiful pink. Something I've noticed over this is that since this unit has mounting holes, um, the model has mounting holes, which I really appreciate because that should take the finickiness of the, uh, like doing the, uh, oh, actually I have one sitting right here. Uh, that should take the finickiness of doing like the Helltech V3 boards in this enclosure away. And so I think firstly we just connect the battery connectors and just make sure I go with this way with the wires. Soldering iron on. I'm going to double check documentation to make sure that this left pin is positive. So I just wanted to double check the documentation here. This is the rack 19007 
And if you look here on the silk screen, let's see if I can get my camera to focus down that far. And there's a plus right there, meaning that this should be the positive side. And I just wanted to double check that on here, uh, that that is positive. Because if you go over here and look at this one, uh, it's a different JST connector, but the positive is on the right side, not the left side like this one. So, and it's the same, it's marked correctly on the board over here as well. I just wanted to double check. All right, so this is crazy new zoom setting that I found on my camera. It looks good. Um, let's put just a tiny piece of electrical tape over that just to be doubly sure that we don't hit against the uh, side of the batteries or something. So now I just have a little square of electrical tape I'm just going to put over this. So to mount this in here I'm just going to slide the battery carriage through here. And flip this over this way. USB-C hole has some little notches up here. I think that's getting in the way. Okay, shove this back up in here and yes, that is much better. So the whiz block actually came with some of these screws. Um, I think these might be the ones to fit in here. So we'll try those instead of the assorted screw set. This appears to be a Phillips Zero. Get this to go in here. Okay, it fits in there. And it looks like it will thread into there. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put our button in. I just kind of dropped it in there. Kind of finicky because it will fall through the hole if you're not careful. And magnetic? Yes, that's good. And let's just start with this guy here. Now, very important, this is just PLA. Do not over tighten these. Cool. And look at that. This should just uh, shove down in here. Just kind of go shove it all at one, uh, evenly straight down. So, next, I will. We're going to put our uh, little JST connector on here. This is supposed to go here. I'm almost positive. Um, or I could put it here. Either way, I got somewhere to put it. So let's do the JST connector first. Stick our little antenna off. Take our nut and lock washers off. And now, usually these are keyed, yeah. So there's kind of a flatter spot on this. Um, or no, there's not actually. Well, it's, it is keyed in here with the shape of the uh, nut head, the connector head. My fingers are too giant, so we're just going to gingerly grab this and turn it. Don't want to mess up the threads. There we go. And that pushes down in there. Go ahead and put this lock washer on and this uh, 
not. So that's installed. So let us connect the antenna here. Again, make sure it's lined up before you push down. Let's go ahead and take this 3M tape off this cover. I put it back into it. Okay, and you're gonna cringe when I do this, but I'm not, I promise I'm not squeezing hard. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on it so that the tape will stick to the wall, the side of the print here. It's all I'm doing. I'm not squeezing. I'm just pushing ever so gently. That is some strong adhesive. Let's test this front. That looks good. Let's go ahead and put this antenna on so I can put the battery in. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna melt just the tiniest bit here to make room for this um, wire. Uh, this was designed with a different 18650 chassis in mind, probably one that has a GST connector on it. That should be enough. Like I said, just the tiniest bit. Get in there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's stick this 18650 in. And she should be on. What if we did this and twisted these wires so that they would be together? Is that crazy? Is that a dumb idea? Either way, I'm going for it. My tape job is an issue here, so I'm going to have to just remove this. Now I just need... Uh, some screws. So I'm using four M325s from this kit and uh, just gonna shove it on in. So there we go, that is our WizBlock Rack 19007 with our LoRa uh, Rack 4630 board installed. Uh, model is uh, by Tony G. It's the same person that had has done uh, these, um, which are they're in, intended to be printed modularly. So um, like this is, I've got the dot design on this. You can do hexagons you can do with the logo without the logo uh, and like I said I just did pink because I had it on there I don't care what this looks like it's going in a box hopefully I'll never see it once I get it going up and there we go you can see that I am connected to what I have called a gondor so I've just started playing with the WizBlock stuff. It's really cool because it's it's so modular. Like the one in here, I get there's two more slots on it, I think, that I can add different things, whether it be a screen or a GPS or whatever else I might want. Maybe I want some environmental sensors. So pretty cool, pretty cool little little project. Um, and again, low, super low power consumption, supposedly. It's supposed to be a lot more lower power consumption than this. So, we'll see. 
Um, I've been trying to get this out to test uh, just in this box with the solar panel I have. Uh, it's just the weather's been horrible and then if the weather's not horrible then I'm too busy and I forget about putting it out. I just need to put this out with the new solar panel and just see how it make sure it maintains a charge. So here's four different examples of mesh-tastic devices. I have links to all these in the description. I've got guides on building at least this one and this one and now this one. I haven't done anything with this one yet. As you can see I've just cut the box open that it's in and uh, shoved it in there to use that as an enclosure. Any of the tools and materials I use in this, links are in the description. Hopefully you found this useful. That's all the time I have for today. This has been Amateur Hour. I'm the Brocam 73.